The first part of this video shows how to install the full suite of Microsoft Exchange applications on AWS using AWS Installation Wizard. You can skip to part 2 to see how hosting controller is installed and connected to Exchange for further automated migration, provisioning, and management. Deploy the Exchange server, open the AWS Quick Start interface and launch the deployment through the wizard. It will prompt you to deploy into a new or an existing VPC. Click the Create Deployment button on the right. Next, choose to deploy into a new VPC. A new deployment builds a new AWS environment and deploys Exchange over it. The deployment process involves several steps. The first step is to review the permissions. This service creates a default IAM role in your account that ensures sufficient permissions for the deployment. The next step is to configure the application settings. Application settings consist of the deployment name, an option to deactivate rollback on failed deployment, and several network configurations. One of the most vital network configurations is the key pair. Public-private key pairs allow you to securely connect to your instance after it launches. You may either create a new key pair name or select an existing name. Here we will create a new key pair name. Hit the Create Key Pair button on the right. Enter a convenient key pair name, select the private key file format, and hit the Create button. Once the key pair is created successfully, go back to the previous screen and refresh it. Enter the deployment name once again. Set the deactivate rollback on failed deployment settings and scroll down to the key pair name. There select the newly created key pair. Then specify the number of availability zones to use in the VPC. Choose the actual availability zones. And enter the allowed CIDR block. For demonstration purposes, we have allowed all IPs but you may define your own CIDR. Under Active Directory Configuration, specify the Domain Administrator Password, the Domain NetBIOS name, and the Fully Qualified Domain name. Under Exchange Server Configuration, select the Exchange Server version. Under Failover Cluster Configuration, specify the details for each exchange node added by AWS. By default, AWS adds two mailbox servers to the environment. If required, more mailbox servers can be added later. The details for each node include the NetBIOS name and private IP addresses. Then hit the Next button. The third step presents the infrastructure settings. Enable infrastructure suggestion for storage and compute. Select the amount of memory for each node. And hit the next button. The fourth step allows you to review the post deployment steps. After reviewing in detail in the fifth and final step, deploy the exchange server. The deployment may take up to a few hours. The status can be viewed on the deployment details page. After the Exchange server has been deployed, install Hosting Controller. A public-facing remote desktop gateway server is provided by AWS. You should use that gateway machine to install Hosting Controller. The resources for this public-facing server can be increased if needed. 
If your organization has an existing instance of SQL Server, you may create an additional database in it. Otherwise, you can host your database in an entirely new SQL instance. You may acquire a separate AWS virtual machine for this SQL Server instance and set it up with any edition of SQL Server 2008 or above. If your use allows you may also acquire a new Windows VM and install SQL Server Express on it. Hosting controller can be downloaded from the download link on hostingcontroller.com. Connect to the remote desktop gateway server using the public IP address provided using Windows RDS, open a browser on that server and download the primary installer of hosting controller from hostingcontroller.com. Then run the installer on the gateway server which will also be the hosting controller control server. The installation itself is fairly simple. It permits a setup wizard to run and allows users to follow a step-by-step -step installation procedure. Once the installation is complete, access hosting controller by providing the IP of the gateway server and port 8797. In case you need to access hosting controller with your domain name instead of IP, follow the link below. Then log in with the tenant credentials. Configure the exchange server globally via cluster settings. You will see a list of all the software applications that Hosting Controller supports. Select Microsoft Exchange under the On-Premises tab from the available list and enable the same version of Exchange you chose while deploying AWS. Then navigate back to the Configuration section and add an Exchange server in the panel. While adding the server choose the On-Premises Enterprise category under which the Exchange configurations lie. To add the server, provide a friendly name to the server, and select the exchange role. Provide the private IP of the actual exchange server, the domain administrator on the exchange server, the password for the domain admin, and then check connectivity. A connectivity check will use credentials and network settings provided to try and connect to the exchange cluster that we just created in AWS. If everything goes well, you will see the MVX servers, the database selection mode, and the CAS server details. If the connectivity fails, you can always check the exceptions logged in Hosting Controller to determine the exact reason for failure. After the connectivity check is complete, select the relevant domain controller, and provide the domain admin credentials. Then again hit the Check Connectivity button. This check connectivity button checks connectivity through LDAP with the domain controller. If the connectivity fails, you can always check the exceptions logged in hosting controller. If everything goes well, you will be allowed to select the root organizational unit. The browse button will fetch a list of root organizational units from the active directory and display them here. You must choose the relevant root OU under which the intended mailbox enabled users will lie. Select the Active Directory Root Organizational Unit under which the mailbox enabled users will be created, and hit the Save button. The server will be added. From this point onwards, the Exchange cluster in AWS can be managed as any other on-premises or hosted Microsoft Exchange cluster. What to do next? See.